Hey, beautiful people of the Most High God, all praises to the Most High. So the Most High wants me to teach about recompense and deeds. And um, it's basically cause and effect with recompense and deeds. So your recompense good for your good deeds or your recompense punishment, judgments for your deeds. So your, de your recompense is according to your deeds. So, um, and, and nobody is exempt by that. So your good deeds, your recompense good from God, your bad deeds, your recompense punishments. So this is what he wants you to know, right? And that people are being punished, as I've been saying for months now, for the things that they do, their deeds, but they've been, you know, projecting and blaming others for God recompensing them. And a lot of people don't have a spiritual understanding um, that there's repercussions when you do sin, do, do sin and certain things happen to you, but they're, they, they take God out of the equation and just, you know, think that's just life or somebody did it to them when they need to come out of that mind frame. So God wants me to explain recompense and deeds, how they work hand in hand and the cause and the effect of such things. So um, Isaiah 65 and 6, Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Um, okay, so with recompensing now. So in Jeremiah 25 and 14, For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them. Also, that's the children of Judah and the children of Israel. And I will recompense them according to their deeds. So these great kings God will re and the nations, God will recompense them for their deeds. So recompense is according to deeds and according to the work of their own hands. I just read Isaiah 65 and 6, that it, behold, it is written before me. I will not keep silent, but I will recompense even to their bosom. So now we're going to, this is, this is exactly how God recompenses. So we're, I'm going to go in Ezekiel, but let me just read this first in 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So even troubling people, you get recompense from God. And what is it? Tribulation. So the cause is people troubling you. The effect of those people troubling you is God recompenses them with tribulation. Do you see how this works with deeds? Romans 2 and 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds. That's why he tells you in Romans 12 and 17, recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So back with recompense, Ezekiel 9 and 10. As for me also, my eyes shall not spare. This is God speaking. And Ezekiel 9 and 10, as for me also, my eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. So your evil deeds, God recompenses you. Now, to make this clear, God rec recompenses good deeds as well. Ruth 2 and 12, the Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wings thou art come to trust. So that is God recompensing your good work. Now, when people do evil deeds, Hebrews 10 and 30, for we know him that has said vengeance belongs to me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. So God will recompense. That's why he tells you, leave all vengeance to me. And up here in Romans, it tells you, do not recompense, recompense to no man, evil for evil. Why? Because God will recompense this. He says, leave all vengeance to who? You leave all vengeance to God and God will God will judge those who come up against you, as in Hebrews 10 and 30. For we know him that has said, vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Now, in Job 34 and 33, listen to this. Should it be according to thy mind? So should people think judgments should be according to their mind, how God should judge them? No, no, no. 
should it be according to thy mind, he will recompense it, whether thou refuse or whether thou choose. So that's what's happening. People are under judgments from God, whether they refuse it or whether they choose it. And they can't handle it. The ones who've been doing evil deeds. The ones who are under God's, re him recompensing their evil deeds on their head. So, because whether they want God's recompense, whether they choose it or whether they refuse it, it doesn't matter. They're going to get it and nobody could take it away from them, only God. So let me read this again in Job 34 and 33. Should it be according to thy mind? So he's asking, should it be according to your mind how God judges you or how God punishes you? And then you know, and also in the word of God, it tells you, do you know the mind of the Lord? So should it be according to thy mind? He will recompense it, whether thou refuse or whether thou choose. And not, and not I, therefore speak what thou knows. He said, Job tells you he's not going to repent, recompense you. He just told that man he's not going to recompense it. God will. Whether he that person refuses it or chooses it. And that's what people had to understand. Whether the nations, whether you, your family, your friend, your neighbor, the nations, the people who came up against the body of Christ, whether they choose it or whether they refuse God recompensing his punishment on them, that that has nothing to do with nobody because they can't remove it. Only God can. And that got nothing to do with anybody else but them. So recompense is according to your deeds. Now even the children of Judah and and Jacob, did God go um let them go unpunished? No. He will not let you go altogether unpunished. Jo Hosea 12 and 2, the Lord has a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his doing. Will he recompense him? Remember, as though the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant is going to return on to God. You have to know that people have revolted against God, have rebelled. So um, in Ezekiel 7 and 3, now is the end come upon thee and I will send my anger upon thee and I will judge thee according to thy ways and recompense upon thee all thy abominations. And my eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee and thy abominations shall be in the midst of thee and you shall know that I am the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, an evil and only evil behold is come. The end is come, the end is come. It watch for thee, behold it is come. Now you have God recompenses. Now will I surely pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish my anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee according for all thy abominations. And then he goes on to say again, And my eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thy abominations that are in the midst of thee. So how can people blame other people for being recompensed, recompensed by God according for their ways and their abominations? They want to blame people for their ways and their abominations and God recompensing them for what? Their ways and their ab abominations. Behold the day, behold it is come, the morning has gone forth, the rod has blossomed, and pride has budded. They're so prideful. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude. Mul I told you prideful people run in packs. They need an entourage. They need an entourage. Doing all kind of violence, trying to win at all costs. Let me read this again. Behold the day, Behold, it has come. The morning has gone forth. The rod has blossomed. Pride has budded. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain. Pride comes before a fall, a haunting spirit before destruction. Nor of their multitudes. Nor of, nor of any of theirs. 
Remember, prideful people like a lot of things. Neither shall there be wailing for them. Ain't nobody going to be crying and wailing and mourning for them. Because they are wicked in their deeds. And they were prideful. They looked down on people. The time has come. The day draws near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. You know, you, you, I don't know if you understand about the banking systems right now. But the time has come. The day draws near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. For wrath is upon the whole multitude thereof. You understand? God, what God, The wrath is on the whole multitude thereof. The day of wrath. God is punishing the righteous and the unrighteous. Everyone just thinks um, God is just saving the children of Israel. Yes, but he's also, he's not leaving them altogether unpunished. They still got to repent. Doesn't it tell you that they're going to be crying out to the Father, crying out to God? Yeah, they still have to repent. They're not going altogether unpunished. And the multitudes thereof, no, nobody. He's punishing the righteous with the unrighteous. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof. Everybody is going to be affected by God's judgment and his recompense. Um, I don't know if you watched maybe a year ago, he made me walk and speak about that, that judgments affect everybody. Like when it snows, um, it, it snows and it'll affect good people and and unrighteous people, people who serve God and people who serve him not, people who believe in God and people who don't believe him, they're still affected by a snowstorm. This is how his judgments is coming for people. So they better learn how to be nice to people. They better learn how to love people. They better remove racism and prejudice and discrimination from them. They better learn how to forgive and show mercy because the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof. Which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. So you see all that iniquity people were strengthening themselves, whether it was their money they were using in, to strengthen their self, whether it was their job, their occupation, their status, whether it was witchcraft, sorcery, or Satan in their life, or, you know, secret societies, whatever they were using to strengthen their self with their iniquity in their life. It ain't gonna be no more. Everybody on the judgment. This is what they, they're not getting. They have blown the trumpet even to make all ready. But none goes to the battle. For my wrath is upon the whole, upon all the multitude thereof. Because every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to swear Bef that God, uh, before God. So he's going to make people fall to their knees. You understand? And this is what they don't get. Everybody is going to have to reverence God. The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword. And he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. Why would famine and pestilence devour people who live in the cities? Is the, Do you see plants growing in the cities? Do you see trees and fruitful trees and all these fruitation in the cities? No, it's a concrete jungle, so the people will die of famine. They have to go into the grocery stores. They're not self-sufficient. But they that escape of them shall escape, and they shall be on the mountains like doves of the valley. What mountain is that? Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. All of them mourning, everyone for his iniquity. The mourning to God, repenting. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water because of praying on your knees. They shall also grid themselves with sackcloth, penitence, mourning, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Because it's not going to matter. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowls. Because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. What is the stumbling block of their iniquity? Their gold, their silver. And as, as for the beauty of his ornament, he set in his majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. 
and I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute. So basically, that that's a different um, scripture about something else. I don't want to wear. Make a chain for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. That happened already. So nobody can blame anybody for being recompensed their deeds. And God's wrath is on the whole multitude. That's why everybody got to repent. And what? what 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not en inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. As, as it also tells you another time, be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mock. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall reap. What does it tell you here again? Be not deceived. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. So th this is something don't be deceived about. Because don't think you're going to inherit the kingdom of God being any fornicator, idolater, adulterer, effeminate, abuser of themselves with mankind. You're deceiving yourself. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Stay blessed, beautiful people.